Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a great week. I'm just about done with one of my art journals and I bought some new art journals to start working on, but I don't like keeping um, this plain cover on my journals. I typically like to do something special on the top. So I've taken a journal exactly like this one and I put a few coats of gesso on it. And after doing that, I also added some watercolor ground because I think what I'm going to do is create um, some artwork using watercolors. So what I first did is I sketched the image I wanted to create in uh, my old journal. Uh, sketching it in my journal ahead of time gave me a chance to sort of play with the ideas I had and uh, take my time and see what I wanted to come up with. Once I was happy with my drawing, I took some transparent paper and I copied the details of my sketch on that transparent paper so that I can use it to transfer the image onto my notebook. So one last thing I'll mention before starting this process is that I use a charcoal pencil. There is transfer paper that you can buy. The only thing is, is the transfer paper is a wax product and if you want to use that with any water media um, whether it be watercolor paints or acrylic paints your paint won't adhere to anything waxy so it's important to use something that is water soluble and charcoal is usually not a problem um, there won't be a lot of this charcoal transferred onto my surface but i still want to make sure that my paint will adhere well when I'm applying the charcoal over the transfer paper, I'm not being very meticulous about the details in the drawing. When I'm done applying the charcoal to my transfer paper, I'll turn the page over, place it over my journal, and using a pen, I will draw out the details I want to transfer onto my journal cover. Alright, so now I'm done transferring my image. I'm just going to lift the sheet to see. Okay, that's pretty good. I could probably just add... Oops some stuff here but that's not super necessary it's just more out of convenience than anything else but um yeah that's enough detail for me to go on and now I can start working on my painting when working with watercolors it's always best to start by applying the lightest colors first and if you want to go with very light shades of a specific color, the best way to create that is to make sure that you dilute that color with lots of water. This painting is going to be more whimsical than realistic. Regardless, I want to follow some basic rules when it comes to painting this character's face. Since eyeballs are actually more gray than they are white in reality, I'm using a light shade of gray to paint in that part of the eye. Since I was already using a gray, I'll move on to painting the blade of my sword using that same shade of color. Because I'm always being careful about making sure my colors don't bleed into one another, I move into another section of the painting where I know I don't have to worry about this. Now that the flesh tones in the face are dry, I can start working on the sword's handle. Then I use some diluted red to start coloring her lips. Before I continue to work on my character, this seems like a good time to start working on the background. Once the background is dry, I can start adding some color to her hair. Mm -hmm. 
This painting process is all about layering from light to dark. Because my first layer of paint is now dry, I can start adding some darker values to my painting. Here I'm using a wet brush to blend in some of that paint. And slowly but surely, I keep building up my values. I'll keep continuing to build my layer of darker values until I feel satisfied with my painting. Now it's time to give her some eyelashes. It's really neat how adding just a little bit of color around the eyes helps to define them. Once I'm satisfied with my paint layers, it's time for me to let the painting dry and then I can start adding some details with markers. The markers I'm using are water soluble, so that means I can blend the colors after I'm done applying them. And this is what I'm doing here. And some of the details I had transferred at the beginning of my process are now not visible anymore. I brought back my sketch so that I can look at it to draw in or paint in the details on the sword. I'm feeling like her tunic needs a little bit more adornment, so I'm gonna use some gold paint to add some more details to it. I'm happy with my painting and I'm nearing the end of my process, but I do wanna add a title to my journal. I'll start by drawing it out with a white pencil. Then I trace over my lettering using a black marker. And for the final touch, I go over that lettering with a white paint pen. Oh, and one last thing before I let you go. 
Since this painting was made on the cover of my watercolor journal using watercolors, it's important that I spray a fixative to make sure the paint stays set. Thank you for making the time to join me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!